Hello everyone, Venris here and uh, we are back after a big break because I was on the break, uh, Total War was on the break and everything is uh, not being on the break <laughs> anymore. Uh, patch to 4.2 for Shadows of Change, the big content addition that CA announced a few months ago that will be like a, a reconciliation, recovery of Total War. So adding a free content to the DLC that we already but we got a first part of the actual news about it and today we'll be talking about this and especially about cafe i briefly checked the post but i will let you go through it and read about the most important changes because being fully honest it's looking very good so yeah oh what we can start off yeah so i'm rich aldrich so game director of total war warhammer today i want to share some news with you new content that will be arriving in shadows of change which uh, with part 4.2 free for existing owners and bolstering dlc for now picking up the post yes uh, so more or less about the reflecting on shadows of change they are saying that we believe to have listened to the feedback and so on we have the sorry you know this apology letter things like that but the most important thing here is about what is what will be the content uh, so something that no one was expecting i will read this part all of the forces future with the shadows of change DLC can look forward to the sizable collection of reinforcements but we won't be adding hack mother as generic lords important there won't be hack mother as generic lords as mother Rastanka is the only hack mother of kislev similarly the relationship between gospodars and ungols is taking a backseat as we look less at the tension of historic kislevite culture and more at what defines kislev as a unified military force in the era of car france Quite interesting change uh, because every I think everyone was expecting that we will get uh, Hack Mothers. I think we'll still get the Hack Lore of Magic, but the Hack Mothers are not there. Not known the old goals on Gospodars. Big shame, being honest. And same goes with the Bigs for Xanagors. Interesting thing is that there's no mention the fact that the Xanagors had Bigs in Age of Sigmar, so this would be like a IP thing. Here it's just mentioned that it's more elite versions of normal gores and so on. Uh, if you ask me, it's a lame explanation, but uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, more important are what to expect when we are moving forward with the DLC, yeah? <clears throat> and this will be on not only about the Shadows of Change, but they are talking about the Thrones of Decay, that they want to make that each uh, DLC is the same amount of content uh, from going forward. This is okay change, I, I agree with that, especially that uh, they are not going to change the price, that 25 bucks will be a, with the standard for the DLCs going forward. So we have uh, things like free legendary lords, playable for all the factions, unique gameplay mechanics for each legendary lord, Let's hope that the uh, sh uniqueness of those mechanics will be different than the previous DLC. Uh, uh, free legendary heroes, one per race. This is quite interesting. One per race. This is a good change. Very good change. I'm do I don't like legendary heroes, being honest. Yeah, I, I said about it many times. I'm not a big fan of them, but good we are getting those. Uh, free lords, one per race. Again, very good change because we didn't have those especially with the last DLC, we, we had only the Lord for Cafe. Three heroes, one per race, again, very important change. Cafe in vanilla, at least, still lacks uh, heroes. Same goes for the Zinch. Uh, five unique, uh, five units, infantry, cavalry, monsters per race. So very nice, 15 uh, in total. And three regiments of renown per race. Also very good. And one free character. So Helbras was for Shadows of Change. And uh, Thrones of Decay will get a legendary lord as a free DLC. Uh, this is outstanding. This is amazing. This is the thing that I love the most. Like legendary lords. We talked about that. <coughs> Potential further content. Sorry if my throat is a bit sore today. A bit ill because kids are giving a nur Nurgle plague. This is like in standard basis of the time. Okay, potential further content is like new spell lore. So I, I'm betting it will be the lore of the hacks. New mods. This is also looking very cool. And new additional free DLC. Yeah, this is quite interesting also. Uh, and we have uh, like a chart which show, you know, as I was showing, we had uh, free original lords that's staying, 
we have one legendary hero, we're getting two more. Lords, getting two more, two more heroes, six more units, ROR's are not changing, one magic lords, and one new free DLC. Very, very, very cool news, yeah? <coughs> uh, also, <laughs> when possible, with further content, we'll also be adding thematic lords of magic mounts for new and existing characters to make sure and making some much requested free DLC where it makes sense. Cough, cough, Catherine Sled. Yeah, Catherine Sled is like very needed to be instead of beer, so uh, we are getting this most likely. Uh, so, about the uh, like the overall philosophy of the DLC, I really like it, I appreciate it, especially at this, this very big gap of silence that we have. But let's go to the cafe because this is starting to be very interesting and we are uh, actually getting something very unique here. To set the scene we are back to look what we could add to enrich the offering of Grand Cafe in Shadows of Change. We focused heavily on the theme that surrounds the Jade Dragon, his uh, celestial court having his eyes and ears everywhere, having the ability to quickly react and protect his empire to be emperor in stead and purposes. Yes, and the first legendary hero is Saitak the Watcher. Um, Saitak presents an ever-watching protective figure, not this mantle of Yuan Bo, and yada yada yada. But what you don't understand is Saitak, the essential of Sky, is a freaking construct hero, which is looking dope as hell. This is looking dope as hell. Like, yeah, this, I want it, <laughs> I want it. <laughs> so, his gameplay overview is that he's a contrast, co construct with the introduction of Satan in the game. We have revelated the lore of construct of the cafe roster. The track of Satan and both guardians are now considered construct with the same rules as construct found on the Tomb King's roster. Saitaga has an ability that synergizes with this type of unit. So, this is a change that we... Uh, more or less had in SFO, but they are they are made that uh, they are using the same type, so Saitaga will be able to buff them like uh, uh, the Tomb King's hero that I remember, don't remember the name, the Necrotic, Necrotic, I think. Okay, top of he heavy. Saitaga has a high amount of armor, which enables its shrug of most attacks for non-armor piercing sources. As a heavier character, Saitaga will be able to send smaller entities flying with ease. Okay, that's self-explanatory. And giant bow. Armed with wind bow, Saitaka can deliver long range attacks and similar target shot with devastating precise. Being honest, idea amazing. Amazing. For the hero, amazing. The another thing is the Gate Master of Celestial Cities. The Gate Master is being added as a generic hero. Funny thing, we already have the mod. <laughs> uh, this uh, about integrating the SFO that adds uh, uh, Gate Master, but. It's good that they are giving this opportunity, yeah? Uh, interesting is that he get, have, uh, he's a hybrid, so have a sword, shield, and crossbow. And, uh, yeah, and have a horse. Yeah, so that's fine. Like, uh, again, addition is great. Addition is great. But then we are going to monsters and monstrous mounts. And this is when it's starting to be quite interesting. Great Moonbeard. Continuing the theme of Celestial Court and uh, to give the Grand Cafe some additional flying power, like they didn't have enough with balloons, we have added a Great Moon Beard as a both monstrous singularity flying and a mount option variety of characters to field. Uh, I don't know lore that much about the uh, cafe, like, no one knows because it's almost no lore, but uh, it's looking cool. It's like a Phoenix thing. But different, <laughs> but it's looking cool. Yeah, so it's airborne uh, moonfire by flapping its wing. The great moon can produce a vortex of moonfire, which damages all near cough within its radius. So it's spawning a vortex, nice flaming and magical attacks. So it's it's like a different phoenix. Yeah, it's thematical, I would say, especially that the crow spice were theme of Yuan Bow. Celestial Lion as a mount, and mount option for the Astromancer. Astromancer is never used almost in vanilla, so uh, good that this thing is going. The one that I'm really excited about is the Celestial Lion, monster and the mount. Uh, it's a freaking lion with wings. It's looking dope as hell. Very good, like wow. It's fast, airborne and fearsome. Uh, fearsome ability and terror attribute, the Celestial Lion can strike 
fear into the hearts of the nearby enemies. Mode option is for Celestial General. Celestial General, very cool character. It's on foot normally only. And I really like him because I like foot lords overall. But having an ability to have it not only on foot uh, with this freaking good looking lion is great. And it's a single entity unit also. Before I end today, I want to cover an mission that you may be hoping for in Grand Cafe Ro Ro Update and Rosten, an elite core infantry. There is a very good reason for this and trust we aren't monkeying about. The first, as we explained, is on keeping the focus on the Celestial Court and the Jade Dragon. The second being that the Celestial Court don't have a unit of this type to add that we've only just scratched the surface of the possible content we can create for Grand Cafe. And as I mentioned earlier, we have plans to support the game with lots of new content for the foreseeable future. This is quite interesting uh, <coughs> sentence because many people were afraid that every faction will get only one DLC and more or less we see the confirmation here that there will be more and more DLCs coming in upcoming uh, years to come for Warhammer. And an end note, uh, well, the team are still working flat out to have everything ready for the release, but we want to be upfront with you that there is a chance that our intended date could shift slightly. This is the true nature of the video game development. I know it uh, like very uh, good recently because I'm working on my own game, so... Video game development is not in a good state. <laughs> in spotting those last minute issues or adding the final polish, which can lead to the release dates changing. It's important to all of us that we get patch 4.2 right for you, so we won't rush it before it it's ready. Yes, please don't rush it. We know how, how it was previously with rushed stuff for Total War. As it stands today, we are on track to release in the middle of the month, but like I said, this could shift closer to the end of February, depending how the remaining work goes. We Like next week is the middle of February, so I assume it will be the end of February. I'm optimistic out the team and super energized in getting everything done and ready to put into your hands. Next week I'll be back with a deep dive on the additional units coming to Zinch along with the confirmation of 4.2 release date. Thanks for taking the time to ready this chat to you all next week. Very important thing, uh, in terms of additions, uh, to summarize this, like as I said, happy with the content, it's looking very interesting, uh, definitely that is not confirmed at all, is a, a, if the other factions will be getting some mechanics changes, yeah, because like Ostanka mechanics are quite poor. Yuan Bo mechanics were very good, very good, I, even to the point that I would say that the, his compass changes should be just added to all the uh, cafe factions as a base, but maybe just only my opinion. Uh, new units uh, look interesting, monster units. I agree that the cafe should maybe not get such uh, elite infantry. Uh, but we shall see how uh, we, we look in the future. The Lion and the Bird are looking very cool. Cool that they are being mounts. And the Lord and the Hero, uh, the two, two new heroes, are looking also quite interesting. Overall, uh, I'm very happy. Mm, I'm very optimistic, really. I, I was not expecting... Uh, such amount of detail in terms of and uh, creativity, especially for uh, Saitak. Uh, he's looking very good. Like, yeah, he's he's look, looking really amazing. Yeah, but we shall see. And uh, tell me in the comments what do you thinking? What do you thinking? Do you think that those changes can really save Shadows of Change? <laughs> change, change, change. Because for me, as I said, I'm looking on it optimistic. But we shall see the next changes, especially for the Zinch and Kislev. Very big shame that we are not getting those. Uh, uh, hug mothers, uh, ungols, and, and things like that, but maybe the addition that we are going to get for the Kislev will be just better. Uh, and as an end note, uh, uh, for our SFO community, at the ev end of every month, we are giving you a new postcards, and those postcards are uh, hand painted by Shimonov, and this month, postcards that Patreons can win are uh, Snitch, Deathmaster Snitch, Torgrim and Snitch fighting with Torgrim. The only mandatory thing to get those cards is that you need to be an SFO Patron. So thank you everyone for watching and have a nice day and I was Venris and I'm out.